How's it going Rogues Gallery and welcome! Today I am so stoked because we're going to be playing some Blade Rondo Solo. This is a game that I have been waiting for for literal years. Maybe even, I'm not sure exactly how many years, I'm going to say 10 years. I'm not exactly sure how many, but this game is a game that recently got translated from Japanese into this English version and I'm so absolutely stoked. Blade Rondo is a, it's not really a deck builder, it's more like a, a hand builder game that you can play either one versus one, you versus another player, or through a very robust solo like player versus environment mode. There are technically five standalone Blade Rondo games and each one has its own unique uh, solo mode. It's really, really cool. Uh, this game is made by Domina Games, and they always have like this really cool kind of like gothic anime style. I, I really, really dig the vibes. Absolutely can't wait to do this. So we are going to do a solo run of the original Blade Rondo in today's video. And uh, we'll, we'll do a quick little recap of, you know, everything that comes in this uh, legendary set, because I think this is actually a killer buy. This is not, by the way, a trading card game. This is a complete package. It is a card game, but there are five different standalone Blade Rondo games in here. We'll show them all off in just a second, so stay tuned for that. And you know what? While you're here, maybe consider liking the video, subscribing, and uh, letting me know in the comments down below if you like this kind of thing, because I think it could be potentially really fun to do, like, one video of each of the five Blade Rondo games because it actually has like this story, like this overarching story. And the final one is a like climactic battle. So we'll talk about all that now. So let's go to the top down. All right. So like I mentioned, we're going to check out this legendary set before we do the gameplay because I think it's relevant to kind of show it off. This box set is I think it's $175 retail. I actually backed their game found uh, campaign, so I got it for quite a bit cheaper actually. And for 175 bucks, it's, it's kind of expensive, but you get a lot of value here. This box is actually quite heavy, um, but you don't have to get, you know, this box to play Blade Rondo. You can buy each of the, the games themselves for $20. Here is the back of it. Blade Rondo, the legendary set. It actually comes with some play mats and some all, you know, here's the full breakdown if you want to read it, but we're just going to open it up and show you. So we are going to do that. So let's, let's kind of open this up. Yeah, this is a product that I feel is pretty good, though there are a couple like minor, minor things here or there. Uh, the game itself, I think is incredible. Uh, so here are the two play mats that this comes with. Uh, we have the, the red one with, uh, uh, with uh, Maria and the blue one with, I forget her name, but uh, very cool. You don't need the playmats to play the game. They, they come with like their own little things inside of the actual uh, game boxes here, but we're going to use these because we have them. So we're going to set them aside for now. Um, here are the five Blade Rondo games. So you have the original, the original Blade Rondo. Um, and uh, as you can see, it comes with some cards. It has like a little game board here and some dice. And this is really all you need to play. Just any one of these. Doesn't matter which one. They are all self-contained experiences. You can mix and match them if you want, um, but you can also just leave them together as a self-contained experience. You only need one to play with a friend. So you can play 1v1 against uh, a friend with just a single one of these, and these are $20 each. Right, so if you didn't want to get the whole fancy collection, you can just buy all, all five of these for about $100. Um, and I will also say with, for these that they um, fit nicely back into the box, even after you've sleeved up the cards, which I would highly recommend. Uh, all of them come with this uh, nice full color how to play booklet, as well as a how to play the, the solo mode. And there is a story, which is really, really cool. You're going to be battling against the muses for this solo mode. Each of these will have a slightly different solo mode, right? So the original Blade Rondo solo mode is like a boss rush mode, where you have a bunch of different bosses that you can fight against. You fight against the muses of varying power. There's actually a decent variety. Uh, in the second set, Night Chapter here, 
it is more of a 1v1 situation. You're, you're going up against basically like an NPC player, um, which is kind of cool. So like this one's a boss rush mode. This one is a little bit more like playing against another, uh, another player. Uh, the same is true for set three, Frostvale. It's, uh, you're playing against another, like, like against another player. So one of these you're playing against Maria, the other one you're playing against the blue character. Um, once again, I forget, I forget their names. And then uh, set four, Grim Garden. This is back to boss rush mode. So we're going, we're fighting more muses, a bunch of more, you know, different bosses, all that kind of really, really good stuff. The, the, the cards, the main deck cards and all that kind of stuff change for all of these as well. So they're all different, unique experiences. And then the final set, uh, Lost Dream. The uh, single player mode for this is really interesting. It is like a mix of the two. It's kind of like a boss rush mode. And then you have like the final boss of Blade Rondo. Um, it's very, very cool. And she's like got a lot of abilities and she's really powerful. So yeah, that's really cool. Uh, and then what else comes in this? We'll, we'll take off the little, uh, take off the, the packaging. Uh, this also comes with an art book, uh, the art compendium that also tells you a little bit about like the story and the intent behind Blade Rondo, uh, tells you like lore from the characters. Like this, this game actually has like lore and story. Like each of the characters has like a place and um, a history. So yeah, they, this isn't nothing. It's, it, they, they put a lot of work into this. Um, I, I genuinely think that Blade Rondo is a very, very cool product. And like I said, I've been waiting for many, many years for this to get to get translated. Uh, because like many of you out there watching this video, you might want to play like a, a, a good, fun single player experience, right? Those don't really exist a lot in card games. Uh, so yeah, if you if you like Blade Rondo and you want the full experience here, this uh, legendary collection is pretty nice. Uh, and then you also get a couple other things. You get this like metal coin that's really cool looking. The one side on the sun, the other side is the moon. It's very very cool. It's like a nice metal coin. And then you get some foil and alternate art cards. Uh, for Blade Rondo. These are the original versions because I've already swapped the foil and alternate art cards for the ones in my actual game boxes. So speaking of which, let's kind of put some of these back. I do want to show you um, how you can get the cards back in the box sleeved, which is important because I think it is this set actually. One of the sets that I got, uh, some of the cards were damaged like just out, out of the product. Um, it doesn't feel like they were packaged very well uh, in that it feels like the machine that was doing the shrink, shrink wrapping like damaged the product. Like I said, you can fit sleeved cards back in even with these. And I do believe this is the one that was damaged. Let me, let me kind of take another look here. Ah, yeah. So you can see it right here on the glare. Like the, all of the cards in a row felt like a roller just destroyed them. Um, and you can see it even worse when I like take it out when I take it out of the sleeve. Like, look at this guy. It got absolutely ruined. Uh, for me, it's not as big of a deal, uh, because you can just sleeve the cards up and it's like, you know, it's fine. Uh, these are just standard size cards, by the way. Um, and the cardstock itself, not the best cardstock. I would describe this as board game quality cardstock. Uh, so if you are a, a TCG player like me and you're used to really high quality cardstock from, you know, your Japanese card games like We Cross or Shadowverse, this ain't that. The, these, these are, this is some, uh, like I said, some um, board game quality uh, card sleeves here. I, I will mention though that, uh, you know, they sleeve up pretty nicely. Um, this one in particular, so these are the muses the bosses that you would fight in this this version's boss rush mode. And you have like your level one muses, your level twos, and then you have your really powerful like level three muses, which is uh, which is cool. I sleeve them up in different sleeves. So we have the boss cards in uh, some sleeves, and then these are like your main deck cards where you build your hand with, um, or you play against your opponent who would also build their hand with. Uh, we'll talk about how to play the game uh, very shortly, actually, because we're going to put this away and then we're going to start our, uh, our game of Blade Rondo. 
I've played this uh, several times already. I think it is incredibly fun. Um, if you want a fun single player challenge, highly recommend Blade Rondo. It's why I'm making a video on it. Um, but we are going to just play the original, original game here. All right, so let's set this up. Here we have our attack and our defense, and then we have the dice corresponding to that. So we're gonna set that here, zero attack and zero defense, not in that order. We have our voltage also starting at zero. And then for the uh, the Muse, they will also start with, well, they no, won't necessarily start with zero attack and zero defense. It'll tell us what they are on the card. Uh, we also each have 15 life. And so we'll move our little life counters over to 15 for each of these. I think we can zoom in just a little bit to get this a little bit nicer and in frame. And then we have the cards here. Uh, technically, they don't have a voltage, but I do like using this to count uh, turns. Uh, so here are the cards. So we have our basically our player cards here, and then we have our muses. These are all of the muses that we could potentially fight. Um, you can choose which one, ones you want to fight, um, you know, to your own uh, pleasure. But uh, we're going to be playing with the official rules, which is they're going to be random. So we're just going to shuffle these up and we'll, we'll, we'll fight them at random. There is a suggested like starter battle, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to do like the standard rules. So we're going to shuffle these up and we're going to set these aside. Uh, and th these are going to be the muses that we fight, or at least uh, the top five muses uh, that we fight. And then here are our player cards. And I have sleeved these up in beautiful, beautiful sleeves here. Uh, these first couple cards, the uh, Inquicken, Enkindle, and Enamor. These ones are like the, it's hard to tell, but these are the alt art foil versions, or rather the foil versions that I that I got. I do have the alt art cards in here, like this Black Blade is a alternate art version of a Black Blade. But uh, anyway, so in a 1v1 game, both players get uh, one Enkindle and one Enamor. It's how you increase your attack and your defense. And then the player who goes second would get the Inquicken token. It's kind of like a coin if you're used to Hearthstone, but in a 1v1 game, this doesn't, no one gets that. Um, so yeah, we will get one Enkindle and one uh, in armor. And these are our breath cards. Uh, these are how we like power ourselves up. We just have them down here and we can play them every turn. And then here is the rest of the deck, right? And like I said, this one is like uh, the Altart foil version, but this is just gonna be randomized. We're just gonna shuffle this up and then we will uh, basically create our hand. Blade Rondo is a game where you craft a, craft a hand and you can play that hand every single turn as long as the cards aren't permanently removed. Uh, there are some cards that are super powerful that uh, you can only use once and after that they're gone. Uh, and, but most of the cards you can keep playing over and over. And so at the beginning of any Blade Rondo game, both if you're playing against uh, a human player, like a 1v1, or if you're playing in a situation like this where we're doing uh, PvE or solo mode, uh, you're gonna be able to craft your hand out of, I believe, 15 cards. I think you pick seven cards out of 15. So we're gonna give a nice little shuffle. You can pick multiple of the same card, and that is a good uh, strategy maybe, if uh, you wanted to play two of that card in a, in a turn. Uh, because when you play a card in Blade Rondo, you can only use it once per once per round. Um, and we'll just kind of, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll go over how you actually play the game while we play, and it should be uh, pretty straightforward. So that's a nice little shuffle. I shuffled the crap out of that. All right, let's get the rule books just to make sure we're gonna be doing this 100%. All right, and here is how to set up the solo game. It's pretty simple, we've done a lot of it already. Uh, so basically we, we set up the game board as, as so, and it says shuffle the 40 sword cards and place them face down to form the sword deck. Do the same for the 20 muse cards to form the muse deck, we have done that. Now we'll draw 15 cards from the sword deck and choose seven of them to build our hand. Then we'll shuffle the remaining eight cards back into the sword deck. Then we take the top 15 cards from the sword deck, keep them face down, and this will be the support pile that we can draw from. We're gonna try to not use the support pile, but you can use the support pile if you need to. And then we'll draw one card from the muse deck, and that will be the first muse that we fight. Uh, if we can beat five muses in a row, we win. 
and if you lose a single time, the game is over. So once again, it's like a it's like a boss rush mode. Um, all right, let's uh, let's do that. I'm I'm excited. This is really fun. I've played this just a bunch in my free time, and it is just such a blast. So we'll do uh, three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five. So we have 15 cards here, and we're gonna build our hand from these 15 cards. This is the most important part of the game, I think, because this is going to form the basis for how we're gonna play. And I'm kind of quickly looking over these. We're not gonna go, ooh. I'm not gonna go over everything individually. I'm gonna pick out um, seven immediate ones that really, really stand out to me. So I really like Hibiscus Flare uh, because it can do magical damage. And magical damage can bypass our opponent's defense. Um, so yeah, I really like Hibiscus Flare. And I think we saw, yeah, Igni Cosmos. So I'm gonna take Ibis Hibiscus Flare and Igni Cosmos for some damage. Uh, the Moonlight Rutile, uh, increase your defense by three until end of turn. It's a response, but you can only use it once. Any card with the L here means it's uh, limited and you can only use it once. Dancing Dagger is pretty nice. It's a physical attack, and then you can pay one and you could do it again. So that's not too bad. Uh, Hastening Rondo, at the end of turn, your voltage increases by one. That's not too bad either. So this is kind of like a ramp card. Maybe, I haven't used that one yet. Zealous Zweihander, uh, it's a five cost, but it ignores our opponent's defense. So that could be good too. We could like ramp into that. Hmm, maybe. Uh, Dayspring can, uh, Cantata. Uh, your attack increases by two until end of turn. So it's just kind of like a little plus two. I can see that being used with the Dancing Dagger. So you can uh, attack and then attack again, like kind of like a little combo. Uh, Slashing Saber is just a really basic attack. You might consider, ooh, Black Blade. I really, really love Black Blade. It's a two cost, uh, it's just a physical attack, but your opponent cannot respond to this. This is a really good way to get around some of the, the boss abilities. Dripping Dirk gives them a poison effect. Uh, let's see, Spectral Lupine. Oh, okay, we're gonna use this one. This card's nuts. It's a four cost card. You can only use it once uh, and it deals half damage. Like, um, I shouldn't say it that way. It takes away half of our opponent's life. It, like, it just does them like 50% of their life in damage. This card's really, really good. I think we're playing that one for sure. Uh, another Black Blade, another Hastening Rondo. This is the uh, the ramp one. Warding Agate. Ah, okay, so there's there are two cards that function differently in uh, solo mode, and it tells you what they are in here. Uh, let's see. All right, so, well, there's three, actually. There's Crushing Claymore, uh, Warding Agate, and Misty Pearl. So this is the Warding Agate. This one says... Uh, on their next turn, the Muse will not perform any attacks of the same name as the attack you responded to. Okay. All right, yeah, so I think I think we want to use this. It's a one-shot only, but it will blank one of our opponent's attacks, uh, which is really good, can really save our bacon. I think we want to run the Black Blade. I think it's just super, super good. So that is five. We have two more options. Um, I like the Hastening Rondo. Yeah, I think we're gonna do the Hastening Rondo. What's, what's, what's Maddening Cadenza? Oh, it summons a Minotaur. Hmm. I'm not sure I wanted to fiddle around with that this time. So I think we're gonna do the Hastening Rondo, potentially. And then three, four, five. Uh, what else? P possibly the, the Zweihander. Because we could build our attack up enough. Well, Hibiscus Flare is really good because because it just does like three base magical damage or six if we have no hand. So we could just grab like a little, a little one drop, like maybe like this uh, Moonlight Rutile, which can just pump up our defense for a turn. All right, I think this might be, I, I think this might be a good, a good uh, starting hand. So basically we, we will have access to this hand. Um, and as we play these cards that have these, this L on them, they go away and we will not be able to use them again. So eventually these will only be the, the, the three cards that we can play, um, which would be four, five, six, seven. So getting up to voltage nine <clears throat> doesn't really do that much for us. But uh, yeah, I'll explain that a little bit more as we go, but I think this is a good start. I think getting some defensive options is really, really good. Uh, this one is just in, insanely powerful. It's gonna deal a crap load of damage, half their health. Um, and then getting the ramp and some other nice stuff. I really like Hibiscus Flare. I think it's really, really good. So yeah, this will be our starting hand. Um, 
and then these all get shuffled back in here, and then we will draw 15 cards, I, th I think it's 15, 15 more cards, to form the support deck. And the support deck, at any time on our turn, we can pay two and uh, basically get a card from the support deck that we can play for free almost. Um, in the runs that I've done, I haven't had to do that yet. So, you know, I, I think it's a, a good thing that you can fall back on, but uh, for the real challenge, I recommend not, not doing it. But we'll do it just in case we, we need to. Let's double check to see. Once again, I think it, I think it is 15. Here, 15 cards, put the top 15 to uh, blah, 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 the support deck. Yep, okay. So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This will be the support deck. And these other cards are just uh, gone for the rest of this match. We're not able, we are not able to look at these. 3, uh, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5. Okay, cool. And I'm just going to set this over here, kind of off off camera because we're going to use this as our play space um and now let's see what our first enemy is and we'll walk through a turn as we go so our first enemy is lillianne she has one base attack and three base armor so we're going to set those here then she has two initiatives so she that means she acts every two turns and so we're going to be using this dice to count that down uh, here are her abilities. Every time she acts, she does every single one of them in order from top to bottom. So she has Endless Whisper. She gains four life. She has Breath. She increases her attack by one. And then she does a physical attack. And this attack ignores our defense. So this tells me that we don't care about our defense this time. We don't want to focus on our defense. We're going to focus on pumping up our attack and then just trying to kill her as fast as we can. She does have base uh, armor three. This is the Songstress of the Battlefield. Uh, the way that damage is calculated is if it's a magical attack, it just does straight damage. If it's a, a an attack, like a physical attack, then you subtract the defense from the attack, right? So if I'm attacking them for three, I would deal no damage. If I attack them for four, we would deal one damage. All right, so we always go first unless the muse says so on the card. So we're going to go first. Every single turn, we increase our voltage by one up to a cap of nine. None of these stats can ever go higher than nine, just so you know. And now we can play. So because we know that, we have a couple one drops we can play. Um, we don't want to play any of our defensive stuff because they're just kind of a one shot kind of deal and we want to save these for later. Also the Moonlight Routile doesn't do anything because it increases our defense and uh, she ignores defense. So we are not going to use that card this, uh, this battle. We could Igni Cosmos to deal one damage. But I think it's better to use one of our breath cards here. So we're going to do Enkindle here. Enkindle costs one and increases our attack by one. And armor will increase our defense equal to X. The, your defense just becomes X. Uh, we're not going to be using this this round because she doesn't care. She just ignores our armor. So we're going to spend one point and we're going to do Enkindle, which will set our attack to one. The um, voltage here are... This is our resources, right? Increases by one every turn, and then it refills. So next turn we'll have two to use, and then three to use, and then four, and five, yada, yada, yada. All right, so it's going to be our turn. Um, it's her turn. We're just going to mark this as a one here. She will only act every two turns, so she doesn't do anything now. Now it's back to us. So now we have two voltage. Um, I think we're just going to keep doing it. I think we're just going to uh, enkindle to increase our attack. And then we have another one we could do. I could do Igni Cosmos. I can hit her for one, but she's literally just going to heal for four next turn. So it's not going to do anything. Um, let's see. There's not really much else. I, I'm just going to drop this one just because I, I want to get it out of my hand because Hibiscus Flare does more damage if we have no cards in our hand. So let's just get this out of our hand for now because we can't unkindle twice and there's no point to doing an armor because she's going to ignore it. So we're just going to play the Moonlight Routile. Normally when you play one of these response cards, it goes face down against your opponent and then, you know, it's kind of like a trap. But we're playing single player, so we're just going to play these face up. All right, so she's going to finally have her turn. Uh, she's going to do these in order. So she's going to heal for four. She cannot be higher than 15 health, so she stays at 15. Her attack is going to increase by one. And then she will attack us and ignore our defense. So hit us for two. Uh, that's going to trigger the Moonlight Routile, which will increase our defense by three, which is ignored. 
but I must just want to get rid of that. Uh, any of the cards that have this L, the limited, means they are discarded after they are used. We'll get them back during the next boss fight. All right, now it's going to be our turn. We go up to three voltage. Uh, I think now could be a great opportunity to use our Hastening Rondo to gain extra voltage. So I think we're going to do that. So we're going to play Hastening Rondo for three. And then at the end of our turn, that increases our voltage by four, uh, by one to four. That's like a one shot only thing. Goes back to her. She doesn't do anything this time. Goes back to us. We go up to five, which is great. All right. So at five, I think we're going to do uh, Lupin. And then oh, she's going to heal immediately. Hmm. Maybe you want to save the Lupin for a turn where you can just kind of like combo her off. Because she's just going to keep gaining four health. So I think... I think this time we are going to... Hmm. I think we can increase our attack. Maybe we just do this. Maybe we just do the Lupin and, and increase our attack. Maybe that's the play, right? We can do... Igni Cosmos, so we'll do Igni Cosmos for one. Uh, so we'll take one damage, go to 14. And then we'll do Spectral Lupin for four, and that'll, that does uh, X damage, where X is half their current life. So they're at 14, they'll, do, they'll go to seven here. Okay, I think, I think we can do that. Uh, and so the Lupin is a one shot, so it goes away. We get the Cosmos back. Uh, they're gonna gain four life, so they're gonna go from seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Right? Wait. One, two, three, four. Yeah, 11. And their attack's gonna go up by one, and then they're gonna hit us for another three. One, two, three. Now we're at 10. All right, back to our turn. Uh, we're going to go up to six. All right, so we have some options. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we wanna run out the warding agate on the next turn. So I think this turn is gonna be, we have six available. I think we just, we, I think we just hit her. So we're gonna do four for Hibiscus Flare, which will deal three damage. It's magical damage, so it ignores the, uh, it ignores uh, defense. So it goes one, two, three. Then we're gonna do Igni Cosmos for another one, take him back down to seven, and then we're just going to enkindle to increase our attack to three. I think that's gonna be our, our move. These all come back to us. Uh, her turn. She doesn't do anything goes back to us we go up to seven here and I think this is where we can I think this is where we can finish her off four five six seven no we don't don't have enough uh if we play all of our cards uh hibiscus flare will deal six damage but do we have enough anyway she's at seven uh we have three four hmm we do not have enough damage to to, to finish her off so I think what we're gonna do is we'll just drop the um Four, five, six. Yeah, I think we'll just drop the Warding Agate, which um, it does have an alternate effect for uh, solo mode. And that is that it basically, it says on your opponent's next turn, the Muse will not perform any attacks with the same name as the attack you responded to. So we're gonna, we can make it so they can't hit us again. Uh, just kind of helps negate it. I don't think we can use it on the heal because I don't think the heal counts as an attack. Yeah, I think it's a, an assist. I'm pretty sure. So we can do that. They're going to heal again. I think it's good to just get the Warding Agate out. So we'll do the, get the Warding Agate out. We have six more points to work with. I think we're just going to Hibiscus Flare for three. One, two, three. And then we will... Four, five... I have two more. Igni Cosmos for one. And then we can Enkindle for, for four here. All right, so... These are going to come back to our hand. Um, she's going to have her turn. She's going to heal. One, two, three, four. Go up, back up to seven. Um, attack increases. And then she's going to hit us for four. One, two, three, four. We're going to six. Now this is going to make it so then she cannot hit us again for the next time. Because we are responding to the attack. All right. Now we go up to eight. And we should be able to finish her off now. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. We can, we can finish her off now. All right, so we're gonna start off by doing uh, Igni Cosmos for one, take her down to six. Uh, then we're gonna do Black Blade. It's gonna cost us wait, four, five, six. Oh, we can we can we can actually enkindle first. So we're gonna enkindle first, 
Increase our attack to five. Then we'll Black Blade, which will do just a physical attack. Cannot be responded to. Uh, our physical attack is five versus her three. So she'll take two, one, two, go to four. And then we still have four points remaining to do our Hibiscus Flare, which if we have no cards in our hand, it does six damage, which is more than enough to kill her. And we had enough points, we had eight. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Huzzah! Round one, us. We have taken the first round. All right, and so now we need to beat four more muses. So let's reset here. All right, Elian is defeated. Our next muse is going to be Rejeka. Rejeka, I'm not sure. She does every three turns, which is kind of scary probably. A zero attack, two defense to start. So we have zero attack, two defense. Uh, this is the manipul manipulative noblewoman, Rejeka. Uh, in armor, she increases her defense by one, okay. And then she does Bull Rush. Resolve this attack as if the Muse has an attack of 10? What? <laughs> what? All right, so she increases her armor and then hits you for 10? Holy crap, dude. Okay, I, th I, think, I think we can play around this though. I think we can play around this. All right, here we go. Round two, start. All right, we're gonna go up to one here. And I think, yeah, I think we need to drop the Warding Agate and the Moonlight. We can probably do that on the first attack so she can't get through us. I think we really need to burn her out with magical damage. And we're probably not going to be able to use the um, Black Blade all that much. Because she's going to gain so much armor here. So I think what we'll do is we can just start chipping her down with Igni Cosmos and then maybe try to increase our defense a little bit because um, she acts every three turns. So we'll do Igni Cosmos for one damage. So that comes back to us. Uh, she has her first turn, does nothing. Back to us, we go to two. I think here we can do, hmm. I think we're gonna do, so, I'm not sure, this is one rule I'm not 100% sure. In the 1v1 mode, when you play any of these responses and they're not triggered, they come back to your hand uh, at the end of their, your opponent's turn. I don't know if that happens in the single player mode. It doesn't say, it doesn't say. I assume they come back to your hand. So we're gonna, we're gonna play with those rules in assumption. So I think on this turn, we are going to, let's see, next turn we can we can hastening rondo. So this turn, let's just do an armor for two. So we'll do an armor for two, set our defense to two. And now it's gonna to go to them, they go to level two, or they go to their second turn. They don't do anything yet. Next turn is where it's gonna hurt. Uh, we are going to go to three, and I think this is a turn where we want to just hastening rondo, right? Um, oh no, we, no it's not. Next turn, no, it's not. We, we actually want to... Oh, it's actually kind of rough. I think we want to... I think we want to double here. Yeah, I think we want to Moonlight, Rutile, and Warding Agate. And then... Igni Cosmos, then? I don't think Ign Igni Cosmos is going to matter, because the next turn we're going to do Lupin, and then it'll take half their life. But I think we can finish them off afterwards with a combination of, like, Hibiscus Flares and um, Cosmos. So, yeah, I think this turn we, we play both of these. Um, and then with the remaining point, we will just hit him with an Igni Cosmos for one. Take him with 13. I don't think it matters at all. Because um, the in armor just sets it to that. We can't use this to give it plus one. All right. So this comes back to my hand. Now they have their first turn. All right. So they in armor. So their defense goes up to three. And then they resolve this attack as though it had an attack of 10. So they're attacking us for 10 here. That's gonna trigger both of these. So we're gonna trigger Moonlight Rutile. Uh, that'll increase our armor uh, for this turn by three. So that'll make us have um, five base armor. So we're gonna take five from this, which is actually isn't too bad. So we'll go from 15 down to 10. And then that's also gonna trigger our Warding Agate and it'll make it so that they cannot use that attack next time. So we have a whole freebie. I think we just win right off the bat just because they can't do that attack again. At least the, for the next attack. All right, so it's gonna go to us. We're gonna go to four. Um, and I think here we just drop our Spectral Lupin. 
So that's just going to deal X damage where X is half their life rounded up. So half from uh, 13 is, yeah, it's just going to be uh, seven um, rounded up. And then that's going to be our turn. This is their first, first where they're just kind of like powering back up. Going to go back to us. We're going to go to five. Uh, I think here we can do, let's see, they're at, let's see, we can hit them for four and then four. Yeah, yeah, we got them. Yeah, easy. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, so we'll just hit him for Hibiscus Flare for three. One, two, three. Hit him for Igni Cosmos for one. And then it's going to be the end of our turn. They're going to have their second turn. They don't do anything. We're going to go up to uh, six here. And then we're just going to Hibiscus Flare and that, that'll kill him. One, two, three. Nice. We have a really good deck against this boss. I can see other decks that might not. Uh, like we have the ability to stall and prevent that one attack, uh, which is which is pretty good. So uh, Rejecca, boss two, is down. All right, let's reset everything. We're gonna go to boss three. Um, let's see what they got going. Boss three, it is Meltia. Hey, she's uh, she's the one on all of our uh, all of our fire cards. Look at that. All right, so she does every single. Oh, I remember her. I've, I played against her. She's kind of brutal. So she acts every single turn. And she goes, burn, 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 burn. So she hits you four times with magical damage. She has zero attack and two defense. So we're going to set our defense to two. Uh, basically, she just hits you for four damage every single turn. Um, some of our... Actually, the, the warding agates are going to be really good against her. But this uh, Moonlight Rutile is pointless. Okay, so let's begin. We'll go up to one... Um, armor is useless against her. Attack is not, though. We can Warding Ag at any turn, as long as we have, like, a, some spare stuff. So I think turn one, we will use to Enkindle. Uh, and then she has her turn, which she hits us for four. Burn, 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 burn. All right. Back to us. Uh, we go up to two. I think this is a turn where we can safely play the Warding Agate. So we'll play Warding Agate, uh, and then we'll do Enkindle, get her attack up to two. Now she's just gonna go burn, 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 burn. So we'll take one, two, three, four. But now the Warding Agate is going to make it so she can't use uh, the burn attack. And since they're all the same name, she will not be able to use any of them, which is great. So that'll save us for, for one turn here. Um, so she, Hit us for that. So now it is our turn. We're going up to three. Uh, on this turn, we could do the Hastening Rondo here. Because we I feel like we have enough time. I feel like we have enough time. So yeah, we'll do we'll do Hastening Rondo here. So we'll uh, go up by one voltage. It will be Melchia's turn. Um, the Warding Agate triggers and she cannot do the ability. It's going to go back up to us. We're going to go up to five, which is great. Um, and so with five, we can start to burn her out. I think, I think we might just barely be able to do this. It's going to be real close. All right. So we need to do with, with five, we'll do, uh, Igni Cosmos for one and then Spectral Lupin for half health. So we'll take him down to seven. Um, Lupin goes away. This card comes back to our hand. Now it's their turn. They go. Burn, 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 burn. Oh no, we're almost dead. We are almost dead. We go up to six here. She's going to kill us on the next turn. So we need to deal. Do we have enough? We need to deal seven points of damage. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, we don't have enough points. We do not have enough play points. If we had enough voltage, we could play everything out and Hibiscus will deal six. Um, plus the one from Igni Cosmos to do seven. But as it stands, I do not think we have enough. We might have to do, we might have to do the draw and hope we get a big, big damaging attack. Um, hmm. This is a dangerous situation or something that'll, that'll, that'll keep us alive. Yeah. All right. 
we're gonna do the we're gonna do the we're gonna do the support draw. All right, support draw uh, costs two, so we uh, we do this and then we pick one of these. Oh, okay, we got some good stuff in here. Um, oh, interesting. All right, I think I think we got enough to win. So this is Guara Miasma. It is a magical attack that does three damage. Tribute, you take three damage. So it basically means if you do this thing, you have to do the other thing. So we'll deal them three damage and then we'll take three damage. Oh, that would kill us though, because we're at three. Crushing Claymore. Crushing Claymore does something special. Um, what does crush, Crushing Claymore do? Crushing Claymore says, uh, choose one of your muse's actions. The muse will not perform the action on their next turn. Yo, let's go. I think I think it, I think the crushing claymore saved us. Choose one of the muse's actions. They will not perform that action. Her action is the same action. It's just burn a bunch of times. So we'll choose burn, and she can't do burn. Um, yeah, we'll not perform that action on their next turn. Okay. All right. So I think crushing claymore. It gets us there. What's this one? Dayspring, Katana. Your attack increases by two. Uh, that that will, that's not going to do it, right? Because if we increase our attack by two, we can play this for free. We still have four points left. That's not enough to to finish them off, right? So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to choose the Crushing Claymore. These two come down here, face down, uh, and then this goes down here, and we can play this this turn uh, for for zero, basically. Um, because the way it works, the supporting draw is, uh, you can do a supporting draw, reveal the top three cards of your deck, or of the support pile, choose one of them, place it next to your breath control, like we have here, uh, place the other two cards face down in your play area, like so, to show that we paid for the two cost. At the end of the turn, remove the two cards from the game, treat the support card as any other sword card, but with the additional ability, or properties. Support cards have a cost of zero, but you have to have at least the required cost to, uh, uh, you may not use a support card if your voltage is less than its cost, which we have six and three, so we can do it. And then if a support card has a limited icon, removed from the game and a turn which is used. Otherwise, it comes back to your breath area and you can keep doing it. This is a limited one, and we're going to immediately do this. So um, it is going to not deal any damage, but the effect still happens. And there is a, some rules in the game where uh, the effects still happen even if the damage is prevented. Um, yeah, cards with bonded or, you know, where does it say? There, there's a part in the rule book that says that. Um, cool. So yeah, we're going to do that. And then we're going to do the effect where it doesn't get to do the, do the ability. And then we're going to use our other four points to deal Hibiscus Flare and deal him three damage. One, two, three. That card really, really saved our butt. And so the turn is going to go over the uh, Crushing Claymore. Uh, goes away, and these cards also go away. We will not have access to these anymore. Uh, they do not go back into our support deck. They're just gone. All right, so comes back to our hand. It's their turn. They cannot do their uh, only attack, which is burn. Comes back to us. Whew, that was close. That was real close. Uh, we'll just do the Hibiscus player for three. One, two, three, takes them down to one, and then we'll do Igni Cosmos for one to finish them off. Melchia, holy crap, she does, she's so good. Um, all right, round three, success, though we did have to do the support draw, which is always kind of a bummer. Um, that's the first time I've ever had to do support draw, by the way. I fought against Meltia before, but uh, that deck had a way to just also, like, give us a free turn, uh, where this one didn't really, it has one, it has that card that, uh, uh, Moonlight Routile can sometimes just not be great. All right, fourth boss. This is Freesia. Oh, interesting. Uh, so zero and two, same. She has initiative of two, a rejection L. So sometimes muses also have limited abilities and um, it only does it once. She does a magic, oh, okay. She's she's basically what we're doing. Magic attack X. X is, your, is half of your current life rounded up. So she deals us half damage. And then she does indiscriminate attrition. Magical attack deals three, and then the muse takes three, and then she deals one more. Holy crap. She does so much magic damage. 
Harbinger of Ruin, Frisia. All right. All right, this is going to be a... This is going to be another race, I feel. Um, armor doesn't matter because it's all magical attack. Okay. Well, once again, the Moonlight Routile. Not great. Not great. All right. So we go first. Um, we are just going to... We're just going to enkindle. Even though we haven't really increased our attack enough to make it relevant. So we're just going to enkindle. It's going to be her turn. This is going to be the first one. Goes back to us. We go to two. I think we just enkindle in Cosmos. Or it could be good to just get get rid of this out of our hand. Hmm. I th think... Yeah, I think we'll just... I don't know. I, I think it comes back to our hand at the end of turn if it doesn't trigger. Alright. I, I think we'll just do... I think we'll just do Igni Cosmos. Um, and then Enkindle. So we'll deal one damage and increase our, uh, increase our attack. Alright, so their first turn. So let's see. They immediately deal us half of our health rounded up. So half of 15 is like 14.5 rounded up is 8. Uh, and then they deal 3 damage. 1, 2, 3. They take 3. 1, 2, 3. And then they deal 1 more damage. Holy, cr holy crap. Um, yeah. I probably should have actually played, instead of doing the Enkindle, I think I should have done the Warding Agate because I think we die now, right? Yeah, because she can't do us... Hmm. Let's see. Well, she's going to take three. I need to get her at three so she kills herself. Uh, on the second attack. We have two turns. This is going to be tough. This is going to be real tough. Uh, the Warding Agate, I should have done it last turn. Because it just makes it so the next attack they do. And I think she's going to kill us on the next attack. Right? Because, yeah, she does eight. And then three and then one. Yeah. Oofa doofa. Okay, well, she's at 11. We go up to three. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So, she'll have one. She'll have two, two turns. Alright, so if on this turn, oh, hibiscus costs three. Or costs four. Hmm. Oi, oi, oi. Okay. I think. <laughs> I think we're screwed, actually. I think we gotta do the hastening rondo. So we can just kind of like try to burst her down. Hastening rondo going up to four here. That's her first move. She doesn't do anything on this turn. Goes back to us. We go to five. Here we can do... Yeah, I think we're dead. <laughs> oh no! I, yeah, I think I think we die here. Hmm. Because... Let's see. We have five, right? I can... I can... Basically, I can take her down to five health this turn. But then the next turn she just kills us. Because she's just going to do... Oh, no, wait. Five. Take her down to five. I should take three and go down to two. No! Is there any other way to deal more than five damage? Because what I'm thinking is... We could do... Our, we could do the Igni Cosmos. That'll take her down to ten. And then we can do Spectral Lupin. Which will take her... Half of that. Which will take her down to five, right? If we don't do that, what are the other options? We can spend three and do Black Blade. This only does one damage. Ah, these do nothing. They do nothing. The magical attack is just so good. Yeah. Does three damage. She takes three. And then it takes one. Hmm. Yeah, I really needed to do... I really needed to do the... Uh, the Agate. We could have won this. If I, did, if I did the Agate instead of like increasing my attack... Um, on the last go around, we would not have died. Uh, so it is what it is. We'll just do what we can. So yeah, we'll do one, take her down to 10 and then do the spectral lupin, take her down from 10 to five. And then this goes away, uh, or rather the opposite. This goes away. And then she is going to have her turn. 
in which case she kills us because uh, she can't do the half-life again, but she will do three damage. One, two, three, take three. One, two, three, go down to two. And then her last ability, magical attack for one, kills us. Oh, so close. It's so close. We, we did lose, we did lose. Um, well, typically that's the end, but let's do like one more bonus round just so you can have five matches. All right, and in the final round, we are up against Umi. With, holy crap, four attack? Okay, so she has four base attack, zero base armor. The otherworldly butcher, Umi, she has an addition of three, and she does enkindle, an armor, black blade, black blade. Holy smokes! So she increases her uh, attack by one, increases her defense by one, and then she hits us for five and then five, because it'll be attack by one. And then this is a black blade, so you cannot respond to this attack. Okay, well, all right, here we go. All right, this is the final boss here. Uh, we are gonna be going first, and armor is gonna be really relevant here. Um, unfortunately, the Moonlight Rutile and the Warding Agate do nothing because, well, we cannot respond to the black blade and we cannot respond to the other two effects from these. You can only respond to the, the corresponding symbols. So this is gonna be rough. This is gonna be rough. Okay. So this is gonna be another kind of like race. We do really care about the armor though. So I think on turn three, we really wanna get this armor up because we don't wanna take 10 just off the bat. So I think we're gonna start by doing uh, in Kindle, going up to one. That's our first turn. Uh, she has her first turn, she does nothing. Our turn, two. I think we're gonna just enkindle and Igni Cosmos her. So we'll do uh, Igni Cosmos uh, and Kindle. So we'll get three and she takes one. Um, yeah. And then she has her second time, doesn't do anything. We have our third time. And then I think this turn, I would really, really love to do Hastening Rondo but I think we just need to in armor for three. I think that's what we have to do here. So we're gonna spend our whole turn to set our armor to three here, and then she's gonna go. So on her turn, she increases her attack by one, increases her defense by one, and then hits us twice. So she's gonna hit us for five and five, but it's gonna be reduced by three each time. So it's just gonna be for four total. So one, two, three, four. Cool. So we, we weathered that storm. Increasing our armor beyond this is going to be really, really useful because next time it's going to go to six and she'll hit us for six and then six, which is quite brutal. All right, so it's going to be our turn. We're going to go up to four here. Uh, I think here we just we just kind of like try to try to dump, dump steer. Actually, we can go Hastening Rondo plus an attack buff. I think that could be good, actually. So we're going to do Hastening Rondo for three. And then we're going to do Enkindle. So that takes us up to three here. And then Hastening Rondo will take us up to uh, five points. Um, and then it goes to their turn. That's their first. Goes back to us. We go up to six. Yeah, I think Hastening Rondo was really good here. Um, we could technically just take this turn to go up to six, which I think might be the play here. Um, and then the next turn, we can just kind of try to combo off. So I think... This turn, we're just going to an armor for six. And that's just, just gonna set our armor to six here. And then they have their turn, they do nothing. Goes back to us, go up to seven. And then here, I think is where we can kind of start popping off because next turn we're gonna survive and then we can just uh, smash them with what we have. So we'll do spectral, ooh, we have four, five, six, we have, we have three plays. So I think it's better to do half health now and then the damage, yeah, so we'll do Spectral Lupin for four, it's gonna deal half of their health. They have 14, so they're gonna go to seven. And then we have three more points remaining. I think the best case here is to actually do our own Black Blade. So we're gonna do Enkindle, increase our attack to four, and then Black Blade them for four damage. Then they have one defense, so that'll hit them for three. One, two, three. All right, this comes back. This goes down here, and the Lupin is gone. And then their turn, they increase their attack to six. They increase their defense to two. And then they hit us for six and six, but we have six defense. So we take nothing. 
That was really, 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 really strong. So we take nothing, and then, uh, yeah, because it just says increase your attack by one, increase your defense by one, black blade, black blade. Cool. And then it goes back to us. And we basically got this in the bag. Our um, armor goes up, or our uh, voltage goes up to eight, and then, very simple, uh, they have only uh, four health remaining. So we can just do a Hibiscus Flare for three magical damage. One, two, three. And then we can kill them with themselves with the Black Blade for uh, for two. Because four and four and two. Yes! We we got there! Dun, 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 dun. All right. So, unfortunately, we misplayed a bit on Frisia and she, she beat us. So we beat... Um, Four out of the five muses here, uh, and that is Blade Rondo. This game is so much fun, and the thing is, that was that. Look how much more, look how many more bosses there are. There are so many more bosses that you can play against. There's extra hard gold named bosses. Um, this is just such a really, really fun game. This is all of this, by the way, just from the single box. There are five of these total. There's so much replayability. Blade Rondo is such an awesome game. If you like single player uh, card gaming experiences, I cannot recommend Blade Rondo enough. Like I said, two of these are not even boss rush modes. They're more like a 1v1 kind of thing. And then on the final one, when you're playing against the final boss, it's like a mix between boss rush, 1v1, and then you have allies that join you, some of the, um, some of the opponents that we're facing now. So Blade Rondo, very, very cool. You even have like all these other cards that you can play with. Uh, there's a lot of replayability. Great game. Please let me know in the comments down below if you would like me to do more Blade Rondo Let's Plays. This game's fun, and I would love to do more. So please let me know in the comments down below, and uh, we'll see you later.